I tend to start a lot of my reviews with something along the lines of when I was a boy or in my youth or blah blah blah, comma, my childhood. So let's keep the nostalgia train rolling, shall we? When I was a boy, the only TV in the house it was in the living room. I spent most days transmitting cartoon nonsense into my young, impressionable eyeballs. And one cartoon stood above all others. Scooby-Doo. No, 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 not, uh, not that Scooby-Doo. Come on, man. Get that garbage out of here. I'm talking about this Scooby-Doo. THE Scooby-Doo. And in all of those countless hours spent staring wide-eyed at the screen, soaking in the gang's groovy 60s mystery adventures, I was never quite able to figure something out. This. Fred's Ascot. What. In. The. F First off, it, what, what is an ascot? It, like some funky 60s tie handkerchief hybrid? Uh, like what was the end goal here? Was it meant to act like a, like a tie 90% of the day, then come dinner time you could untuck it from the, the neck of your shirt, and boom, you can get buck wild with that plate of spaghetti. Go wild, slurp that shit up all you want. Uh, your white dress shirt is safe. At any rate, this video is not about a long out of style fashion accessory, this video is about a knife. This knife. The Best Tech Ascot, a very large and in charge liner lock flipper made by the talented folks at Best Tech Knives. Unlike Fred's orange and awkward neck hanky, this ascot is not a point of confusion or existential rage. The ascot is another one of those Best Tech knives that got lost in the noise or the overwhelming size of Best Tech's product line. This full-size flipper is rocking these gorgeous contour G10 faux carbon looking scales and a big old satin finish D2 drop point blade. And I do mean big. The blade is coming in at a whopping 3.875 inches long. And the overall length of this knife opened up is an astounding 8 and 3 quarter inches. So it will definitely draw some unwanted attention at your next family reunion. Aesthetically, I really like the looks. Very simple and straightforward design. Y you look at this and you say, yep, that's a knife. Elegant yet understated in the looks department. The faux carbon-esque G10 scales look excellent, and the contouring adds some thickness, but also adds to an overall feel of quality. And we get a nice splash of color from the anodized pivot collar, and even though we are looking at a nearly 9 inch long knife, the hardware is relatively sparse, and you know I appreciate a low screw count on my knives. And although the clip is not anywhere close to deep carry, it is smooth as can be getting in and out of the pocket, no matter what type of pants you're wearing. The ergos on this monster are absolutely wonderful. Again, going back to the flawlessly done contouring on the lightly textured G10 scales, it's a dream in the hand, and because it is so friggin' big, you've got all the room in the world to get a comfortable and secure grip, no matter the size of your mitts. And at the blade, we've got a good and usable finger toil and some big comfy jumping along the spine, which means choking up for some delicate cutting work is a breeze, even though I cannot even begin to imagine doing anything delicately with a knife this big. Either way, the Ascot is getting top marks in the ergo department. Now that nearly 4 inch long slab of D2 at the business end is also a point of interest. The satin finish is done wonderfully, and it's as close to a full flat grind as you can get outside of the flat that comes about 40% of the way out the length of the blade. So slicing and dicing is no problem for this behemoth. And because Best Tech started with some seriously thick blade stock, you get a pretty hardy and well reinforced tip. That being said, I wouldn't use this to pry open your paint cans or uh, you know anything along those lines. Now then, on to what put this knife near the top of my EDC rotation. The action. And oh my sweet Jesus, the action is stunning. Truly stunning. The blade is running on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent ball, and both are dialed in so exceptionally well. If you're in the market for a sub-$100 guillotine drop shut action knife, the Ascot is definitely one to look at. The flipping action is excellent and perfectly reliable, and pushing the liner lock aside, which is a breeze to do, easy to get a hold of, will bring that weighty slab of tool steel swinging shut every single time. And there is little to no bearing grit or noise to speak of, and no awkward double clutch issues. <sighs> It opens hard and it closes with little or no help at all, every single time. God, it, it is so good. This is one of those knives that my fiance hates openly and violently if I happen to be carrying it around her because it spends absolutely no time in my pocket. It is an exceptional and addicting action and one that after four months in my collection, I am still not sick of. So then how much would one expect to pay for such an exceptionally made and fidget friendly full size knife? How about 88 bucks? 88 mother dollars for this. 
For this, it's so good. Seriously, swap the G10 for real carbon fiber, swap the D2 for S35 or M390, and I would gladly pay 200 plus for this knife. It's that good. So smooth, so slicey, so comfortable in the hand. It's such a recommendable knife in every single way. Outside of the outrageous dimensions, of course. That being said, if you are shopping around in that sub $100 price range, and you aren't concerned with size or weight, and you want something that will really blow your skirt up, this is it. The Ascot is seriously so good. I cannot recommend it enough. I will be putting links below to some places where you can pick one up so all you drop shut sluts like me can go get your fix. So until next time, thank you for watching. Bye bye now.